Good morning, scholars. Today we're going to continue our way through Herodotus Book 1, looking at the fourth chapter. This is where the Greeks are described as destroying Troy for Helen's sake, and thus raising the bar, escalating the uh, matter of just women being snatched back and forth. So here we go. Macri men own two two, harpagas munas enai par alelon, to the apo tu tu, helenas de megalos aitius genestai. Proterus ga arxai strate uestai es ten asi en e speas es ten europen. Tomen nun harpasden gunaikas. Andron, Adikon, no misden ergon enai. Tade, harpas de se on, spuden, poesas dai, timore en, ano eton. Tode, medemian orhen eken, harpas de se on, sopronon. De la gade hoti e me autai e bulonto, uk an her pasdonto. Spe as men de, tus ek tes asies, legus e persai, har pasdomene on ton gunaikon, logon udena poiesas dai. Helenas de Macedaimoni es Heneca Gunaikos, Stolon, Megan, Sunagerai, Kai Epeta, Eltontas es ten Asien, ten Priamu Dunamen, Catelain. Apot tu tu, I e, Hegesas dai, to Helenicon, Spise, Enai, Polemion, ten ga asien, kai ta en oike onta enta barbara, oike ieuntai hoi persai. Ten de Europen, kai to Hellenikon, hegentai ke koristai. Okay. So, we're going to start by looking at the particles in this opening uh, sentence. Mekri men on tu tu. Harpagas munas enai par alelon. To de apo tu tu helenas de megalos aitius egenestai. Proterus gar arxai strateuestai es ten asien e speas es ten europein. So, this mekre men un tutu, which is answered by, or followed up by, tode apo tutu. Men on is often used to, as uh, Dinston says here, and explains on page 471 to 2. It often, the men clause sums up and rounds off the old topic. So mekri men on tu tu, harpagas munas. So the previous sentence, the previous section, was uh, referring to the tit for tat uh, abductions or going off with women of the Greeks and the Persians, but now he introduces with the dead clause a new topic. So mekri men on tu to. Harpagas munas enai par alelon, to de apotuto. Now, um, note with the to de apotutu in the uh, lecture of the uh, grammatical course, when I talked about the definite article, an important part of that lecture concerned the substantizing character of the definite article. The fact that you can put a ta, here the neuter, 
um, singular uh, definite article in front of any other form of uh, speech here, apotutu, this adverbial um, expression with a preposition, to de apotutu, and you make it a, um, you know, a, a unitary substantive notion. So um, Herodotus and Thucydides as well, they will use this type of construction, i.e. a um, neuter definite article with a uh, prepositional phrase that's referring to time. They will use this to designate periods of time. So we have Macri men on to two, you know, up to this part, and apo de, to de apo to two, but from this point on. So these are uh, really quite wonderful temporal markers that are quite prominent in both uh, Herodotus and Thucydides. And it takes a little bit of getting used to them, but they grow on one and serve the historians quite eloquently. Now, regarding the de, uh, following Helenas, uh, Helenas de Megalos, Aitius Genestai. Well, uh, Denniston treats that on page 212, and de usually has the sense of really or something being very much so. So the Greeks very much were greatly guilty uh, from this point on. Tode apotutu, Helenas de Megalos, Aitius Genestai. And then, of course, the gar, Proterus gar, gives the reason for that uh, statement. Okay. Now, um, so, but let's look at the vocabulary that people might need here. We have munos, which with the Omicron Upsilon, that's the form you'll see in Homer and in uh, Ionic and Herodotus, whereas in Attic, it will just be monos, like we talk of a monad or a monk even, alone. So, munos, alone. Aitios, uh, I forgot the accent, means guilty or culpable. Proteros, a, uh, check out Smythe 1030 and 1069 and following if you're not sure what's going on there, or in order to uh, just see clearly what's going on there. Arxi is our first aorist infinitive active from arco to begin to do x. So arxi strata uesti. And again, remember all of these infinitives are dependent on the leguse, they say, the people whose Herodotus has asked and who have reported to him about these early mythical uh, events. So mekri men on tu tu. Harpagas munas enai par alelon. Tode apo tu tu. Helenas de megalos aitius genestai. Proterus gar arxai strate uestai es ten asi en. E speas es ten europen. So now, um, this next sentence depends on, or construing it ultimately, we'll see the vocabulary on the next slide, but to begin with, we have to deal with this thing called the genitive of quality or characteristic. So, and I've marked uh, with yellow where the genitives have this function. So, tamen nun harpas den gunaikas, andron adikon, no misdain ergon enai. Tode harpas de se on spudain poiesas thai timore en. Ano eton. Tode mede mian horen eken harpas de se on sofronon. So what is then 
this genitive of quality slash characteristic. As Smythe explains, the genitive with ame, and so here we see the ani, which must be supplied. The ani, um, the genitive with ame, may denote the person whose nature, duty, or custom it is to do that which is set forth in the infinitive subject of the verb. Okay, so um, we see here, these examples are good. Um, the first one from Menander, it is of the sage, not of everyone, to bear poverty. It is the sage, not everyone, who can bear poverty. Peni an perein, u pantos, al andros sopo, sopu. And likewise, uh, from, I believe the second one is from Demosthenes. Doke di kai u tut enai politu. This seems to be the duty of a good citizen. Doke di kai u tut enai politu. Now, um, this idiom kind of, I mean, if you were to use it in English, it's a little stilted. If I was a teacher and I were to say, it is the mark of a good student to submit their assignments on time. And I could shorten that to, it is of a, a to, to, so, to submit one's, it is of a good student to submit one's work on time. It is of a careful driver to not allow himself to be distracted. It is of a good quarterback to study the playbook. This is what we have going on here. Um, and uh, although, again, it's stilted in English, it's a very common uh, construction that you'll see in Greek. And it very much uh, needs to be understood to understand what's going on in this passage. You see as well that I've supplied in the square brackets, andron, andron. Um, we have andron adikon in the first of the three uh, statements, but in the second and third, the andron is just understood. And this is part of what they call the economy of Greek, that if you have some element that actually repeats, it will not be repeated. So, um, uh, this is something as well one needs to get used to. So, as the passage actually works, let's look at this vocabulary. No misdo is to believe or to think. An ergon here, ta, is a deed or a job. Um, spudain poiesastai, plus the infinitive means to take pains to do X. And so we have the infinitive timorain to take uh, pains to avenge or punish. And then the thing on account of which one exacts the vengeance or punishment is in the genitive. So that accounts for the harpasteseon, the feminine genitive plural referring to the women who had been snatched. Now, on that, atos is senseless or stupid from nous, uh, you know, ah, without mind, without intelligence, ane, ano, etos. Okay, so that's our vocabulary. Now let's look at the whole thing and see if you can uh, see th this. Tomen nun harpazden gunaikas, andron adikon no misden ergon enai. To de seon spuden poi esastai, temore en ano eton. Now, the no misden ergon enai is a little tricky, but I think it's very close to our English idiom to think that it's a thing. I mean, to think that it's a thing um, to go around snatching women, women 
that is characteristic of um, unjust or evil men. So tall men nun har pas den gunai kas andron adikon no mis den ergonenai. Okay, um, this is a little tricky, but it's a good example of the way Greek order can be very different than English word order, and one would repay the effort and time one would put into repeating this little bit until it begins to make sense um, as uh, Greek with the Greek word order will repay the effort. So, tomen nun harpaz den gunaikas, andron adikon, no mis den ergonenai, to de harpaz de se on, spuden poiesas dai timore en, ano eton. To de medemian ormen, oren eken, harpaz de se on, so pronon. So here, again, we have um, our vocabulary, this expression, oran echo, uh, with the genitive object, is to take care, to care about. So we have to de me de mi an oran eken, the to have no care about, and the thing again about which you have care is in the genitive, har pas de se on to have how then but to have no care of women who have been snatched. This is saw bronon. This is of a wise, thoughtful, intelligent. It's the mark of a wise, thoughtful or intelligent man. So to look at the whole thing. Tomen nun harpas den gunaikas Andron Adikon no Mizde Nergonenai Ta de har pas de se on spuden poiesas thai timore en ano eton to de medemia oren eken har pas de se on so fronon. So again, I've left the andron andron in square brackets, but um, you don't, you know, they, these of course aren't in the text. And the Greek can just go with the ano, ano, eton, and sophronon is of uh, senseless men, is of intelligent men. So again, this is very idiomatic because of the uh, role played by this genitive of characteristic and quality. But it's, uh, so it's worth studying closely and a little difficult to, uh, make natural. Now, De la garde hoti e me autai e bulonto uk an e pasdonto. So here we have garde, and so the de strengthens the gar. Again, gar always, it just gives the reason for the previous statement, but the de adds more punch to it for certainly, for it's certainly clear that de la garde hote. And then now we get this e me altai e bulonto uk an e pasdonto. And here we have, of course, uh, a past unreal condition. And you can see the rules for this in um, Smythe 2302 and following. But notice we have the imperfect in the protasis and the apodosis, and the apodosis has on of irreality, for they would not have been snatched unless they themselves were willing. Okay. So, spe as men de tus ek tes a si es leguse persai har pas domene on ton gunaikon logon udena poiesas tai. Helenas de 
Lacedaimoni es Heneca Gunaikos, Stalon, Megan, Sun Agerai, Kai Epeta, El Dontas es Ten Asien, Ten Priamu, Dunamen, Catelain. So our vocabulary here Logon Poesastai, to make a big deal about, and again, it's going to have the genitive object, just like our previous ones, I think you can probably um, place all these under that notion of that what the genitive of emotion, where something is that's an object of strong emotion takes a genitive. Uh, search around your Smythe and find what I'm talking about. But so log on poiesas thy tenos to make a deal a big deal about something, and here the the genitive that represents the big deal is actually um harpas domana on ton gunaikon and this is a good example where the ton in Heratus, the definite article leans towards that homeric demonstrative sense so uh to take no account of those women uh being snatched and you'll note here that harpas domana on is our um is our present participle which stands uh as well for the participle of the imperfect so it ta it's referring harpas domana on to the various tit for tats the back and forth so the persians say that they themselves okay made no big deal of these women being snatched Helena's de, but the, but the Greeks, on the other hand, notice the men de, and then men de, and then the de. But the Greeks, on the other hand, lake daimoni es henekagunaikos, stalon, megan, sunagerai, kai epeta eltontas es ten asien, ten priamu dunamen katelen. So again, a stalos is an expedition, an expedition, either by sea or by land. And soon ago, um, soon agerai is the aorist infinitive, first aorist infinitive of soon ago, to gather or to organize. And dunamis, dunameos is a pow is here the power, i.e. here of a ruler or a nation. Um, it's worth mentioning that, for instance, in Aristotle, dunamis becomes the very abstract metaphysical notion of potentiality. And, um, you know, so it's a very good example of how across the literature, the semantics of a word can change drastically so that uh, a word that dunamis, that you probably don't even find in Homer, uh, in Herodotus, can have this sense of, you know, a kingdom. And um, in Aristotle, it gains this metaphysical, abstract uh, sense of just capacity or potentiality. And of course, katairao um, gives us our second aorist infinitive, katelain, to destroy. And I think that we have even seen in Homer. So, spe asmen de tus ek tes asies legusi persai, harpas domene on ton gunaikon, logon udena poiesastai, helenas de lacedaimoni es heneca gunaikos, stolon megan sun agerai, kai epeta el tontas es ten asien, ten priamu dunamen katelen. Apo tu tu, aye hege sastai, ta helenikon, spisen enai polemion, ten ga asien, kai ta en oike onta ethnea barbara, oike iuntai hoi persai, ten de europen, 
kai to helenikon hegentai ke koristai. So here our vocabulary IA um, always I uh, forgot the accent, excuse me. IA always hege omai to consider or to think. It also means to lead uh, worth looking at the whole entry in your middle little. And um, we see looking at the principal parts, hege omai, looking at the end for the perfect, you see hege, ge hege mai. So you see in this passage, we have hege sastai, the aorist um, infinitive, and uh, hege omai is a deponent verb, so it has middle form with active meaning. You don't have to worry about being middle and wondering what's going on. But hege sastai, the aorist, the first aorist infinitive, and then hegeintai, you have the perfect, um, which has the sense of, you know, an accomplished present state based on past uh, occurrences. Then in oikeo is to dwell in a place. Oikeiumai is to claim as one's own. And korizdomai is to separate. So, apotutu, aie, hege sastai, to helenikon spisen, enai, polemio. Ten ga asien, kai ta en oike on ta ethnea barbara, oike i un tai hoi persai. Ten de Europen, kai ta helenikon, he gentai ke koristai. Okay, so. Uh, let's read the whole thing again all together. And um, this is, you know, it's, it's a little tricky. It's going to take us a while to get used to Rattus. Macri men on tutu. Har pagas munas enai par alelon. To de apa tutu. Helenas de megalos aitius genestai. Prateruska arxai strateuestai esten asien. A speas as ten European. Tomen nun harpas den gunaikas, andron adikon no misden ergonenai. Ta de harpas de se on spuden poesas tai timore en a no eton. Ta de medemia oren eken harpas de se on sopronon. De la gade hoti e me autai e bulonto, uk an her pasdonto. Spe as mende tus ek tesasies, leguse persai har pasdomenon, ton gunaikon logon udena poiesastai. Helenas de Lake daimoni as Heneka gunaikos, stolon megan sun agerai, kai epeta eltontas es ten asien, ten priamu dunamin katelen. Apotutu, ae, hegesastai, to helenikon, spisi, enai, polemion. Ten gar asien, Kai ta en oike on ta etnea barbara, oike iun tai hoi persai. Ten de Europen, kai to Hellenikon, hegentai ke koristai. Okay, now uh, before we leave this, I want to look very specifically at what's going on with the particles here. We paid some attention to the particles, but uh, there's an interesting phenomenon that occurs in this passage, which I've marked in the purple, which is called ascendaton, which I'm going to explain. So 
a thing that's very characteristic of Greek, most characteristic of Greek, and likewise of Latin, um, is the fact that every single sentence is linked, you know, most often, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time will be linked to the previous sentence by some type of connective particle. Now, Smythe has a really nice section where he goes through the connective particles and basically you come to understand that just like in English, you have three types of sentences, simple, compound, and complex. You have the same thing going on in Greek, uh, depending on which uh, type of particle is in play as the connectives. So here I've marked in the magenta, I guess, the particles that connect each sentence with the next. And then I've marked in green the occurrences of da, 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 da that are responsive. That means they act to continue um, or counterbalance the men or they are progressive. They just carry on and contrast uh, for instance, uh, uh, with the final one. But it's, I just wanted to mark these as being responsive, that in fact that they, you know, work in, you know, to uh, answer uh, the earlier particle that comes before them. So we have the men on, which is continued by the de, answered by that, then the gar explaining, and then the men, da, da. This is really nice because these were our three uh, genitive of characteristics. You know, first, and so this is a sequence of three men, da, da. First, second, third. You know, first it is of an evil man to snatch women. It's of a stupid man to you know, take trouble to avenge them. And it's of a wise man to pay no attention to them. So this is a nice uh, example of Man, da, da, uh, giving you three different uh, closely related things in a series. And then gar, da, the gar ex of explanation is made more intense by the da, for it's totally clear that if they didn't themselves wish to be snatched, they wouldn't have been snatched. So that's a good example of da uh, intensifying the, the explanatory gar. And then you have Manda. Um, uh, this Manda is often used by Herodotus to introduce almost a new, uh, you know, a major, not a major, but a, a kind of like a change of topic, slight change of, of topic. And so Manda, for what the Persians say about their themselves, and then that's balanced with the de Helenas de, but the but the but the Greeks, those crazy bastards, you know, for the sake of some woman, some Spartan woman, they launched this huge uh, expedition and destroy Troy. <coughs> now here, then you have this sentence four. Apotutu I e hegesas thai to Heleni constis and enai polemion. And this, you see, does not have a connective. If it's what's called ascendaton. So let's just look at what Smythe has to say about ascendaton. This is section 2165. So ascendaton. Two or more sentences or words, independent in form and thought, but juxtaposed, i.e., coordinated without any connective, are ascendetic. And such absence of connective is called ascendaton. Now, a little bit of fine print here, but this is very interesting and directly relevant. He says, A. The absence of connectives in a language so rich in means of coordination as is Greek is more striking than in other languages. Okay, so because Greek has such a strong tendency to connect its sentences, when you have 
ascendaton, a lack of connection, it has a much stronger effect than in other languages. Now he remarks, grammatical ascendaton cannot always be separated from rhetorical ascendaton. And we're going to see that this is very much the case here in our passage. He says, grammatical ascendaton is the absence of a conjunction where a connective might have been used without marked influence on the character of the thought, as especially in explanatory sentences, often after a preparatory word, usually a demonstrative, which take up the matter just introduced. Also, where in place of a conjunction, a resumptive word such as hutos, toyutos, tosutos, and tauta, huto, etc., is employed. Now, so we'll see that this is actually the, what's going on. There is a grammatical ascendaton in our passage, but at the same time, an element of rhetorical ascendaton as well. Rhetorical ascendaton is the absence of a conjunction where the following sentence contains a distinct advance in thought, in the thought, and not a mere formal explanation appended to a foregoing sentence. Rhetorical ascendaton generally expresses emotion of some sort and is the mark of liveliness, rapidity, passion, or impressiveness of thought, each idea being set forth separately and distinctly. So he gives us this example from Demosthenes. Is he not impious? Is he not brutal? Is he not impure? Is he not a pettifogger? That is, uk asebes, uk omos, uk akatatos, uk sukopantes. Now, um, ascendaton, he tells us at 2166, is frequent in rapid and lively descriptions. So boom, 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 boom. You know, I came, I saw, I conquered. That's probably one of the most famous ones there is. And then he says at 2167, a syndeton often appears when the unconnected sentence, i.e., when the unconnected sentence summarizes the main contents or expresses the result of the preceding. So that's actually what we have in our passage. Um, if we look back at it, we have a combination of the grammatical ascendaton because apotutu, apotutu points backwards at all that's just been related, or well, more particularly at the sacking of Troy. Apotutu, so grammatically pointing backwards using the demonstrative, tutu. Okay, I a hegesas tai to helenikon svisen elnai enai polemikon. And um, this is, as well, you know, it uh, summarizes the main contents and expresses the result of what had gone before, okay? So this is a very rich passage in a lot of different ways, but it's the first one we've seen where a syndeton is uh, in place. So I did want to point that out, point that out and talk to you about it. Okay, so... Um, this is Herodotus describing how in his world, the world he's going to be talking about, and the wars, uh, you know, the battles uh, between the Greeks and the Persian Empire, that this is how this East and West divide has come about. So I end with this marvelous map showing the huge extent of the Persian Empire. Um, you see uh, Sardis in the uh, West, which was the, uh, you know, the westernmost capital of the Persian Empire, but then Susa in the middle being the actual main capital. But notice that the uh, Persian Empire reached all the way to southern southwest India. So it was immensely huge. 
and the idea that this whole empire would marshal all of its forces, as is described in Book 7 of Herodotus, and come charging down on the tiny, tiny uh, organization of the Greeks, which you see uh, so small in comparison to the great expanse of the Persian Empire. Well, needless to say, this would be a very important moment and um, accounts for the fact that if you look at any list of the most influential battles in uh, history, you will find that the Battle of Salamis, where the uh, Persian, uh, Persian uh, Navy was largely destroyed by the Greek Navy, uh, in Xerxes' account, uh, that that, along with Thermopylae, uh, the battle that land battle that accompanied the naval battle, um, that these are among the most important or find their place in the top five, most certainly the top 10 most important battles in military history, uh, looking at it from a Western viewpoint. Okay, so there we have uh, Herodotus' account of Troy. And since we've been spending so much time reading Homer himself, folks ought to have enjoyed uh, seeing it from a different perspective. Okay, so have a good day, and I will see you again soon. Goodbye.